Hey folks, uh, uh, this is additional topics and probability and counting. This is where we're doing permutations and combinations. We'll see that. So this is section 3-4 in our textbook. So here's some additional topics and probability and counting. Okay, so a permutation, you guys, is when things are in order or, or things are arranged. If you see the word order or arrangement, these are permutations, okay? So the number of different permutations of n objects is called n with an explanation point. Have you seen that before? It's called n factorial, okay? And so n factorial, it just means whatever the number is, it's that number times one less than that number times one less than that number times one less than that number until we get all the way down to three, two, one, okay? So um, uh, n with the explanation is read n factorial. So there's special cases, you guys. Zero factorial is one, but there's other values of n factorial. Also, one factorial equals one. Those are special cases right there. Two factorial is just two times one. Three factorial is three times two times one. Four factorial is four times three times two times one, which is 24. Five factorial would be five times four times three times two times one, which is 120, and so on. So that's how we do factorial, okay? So find a number of uh, different ways you can arrange nine different math books on a shelf. The key word is arrange right there. So you see that? That is a permutation. So it's nine factorial. So nine times eight times seven times six, five, four, three, two, one. And there's 362,880 ways. Okay, go. All right, so different ways anyway. So how many ways can you form a four-digit code if no uh, digit is repeating? Well, one easy way is four, just draw four blanks, okay, and you're going to do multiplication symbols in between them. And there's ten, um, uh, there's ten digits. So, um, so there's ten ways for the first digit, digits zero through nine. Now you can't use that digit. So now there's only nine digits here, and you can't use that digit. So eight, and then seven, and so there's five thousand forty ways. Okay. Another way is since order matters, you guys, is this is called a permutation. So that'll lead us into our permutation formula. So the number of permutations of n distinct objects. Um, here we have 10 distinct digits here taken uh, R at a time. Here it would be taken 4 at a time. It would be NPR, and you do the, the bigger number factorial, and then you subtract them factorial on the bottom, okay? And R is always less than or equal to N, okay? So above we'd have 10 P4, which is 10 factorial over, over 10 minus 4 factorial. 10 minus 4 is 6. So 10 factorial over 6 factorial is that right there. And the reason why I have those in red is because those cancel each other out. There's 6 factorial up here. There's 6 factorial here. So we still get 5,040 ways, okay? So here, a psychologist uh, shows a list of eight activities to a subject in an experiment. So how many ways can the subject pick first, second, and the third activity? Okay, well here, it, arrangement matters. So uh, since there's three activities and um, it's a permutation because arrangement matters, so you can do 8P3. Uh, or just do, um, uh, there's eight activities, and they used it up, so seven activities, and they used it up, so six activities. Eight times seven times six is 336 ways, okay? How many different ways can you arrange the letters uh, A, B, C, D? Well, there's four letters, so that would be four factorial, which is 24. Well, what if the question was uh, A, A, B, C? Well, that leads us into this formula here, you guys. So the number of different permutations of N objects where you have some repeating uh, objects. Here we have two repeating A's. Sometimes you have more than um, uh, re uh, just uh, one letter repeating. You could have two letters repeating or three letters repeating. So th the N is how many letters there are. In this case, there would be four. And we'd put this here for the repeating letters. So however, however remaining, or sorry, repeating letters here are here are the factorials. So there's two A's, so this would be two factorial. Okay, four letters, this would be four factorial, okay? All right, and so those are the repeaters right there. So there'd be only 12 ways to do that. Well, how about this? The good old uh, state of Mississippi, okay? You gotta count the letters, there's 11 of them. And then this four factorial stands for the four S's. This 
four factorial stands for the four I's. And this two factorial stands for those two P's right there, okay? So I, I, um, I always stop at the bigger factorial. So um, here's this factorial, and you can just keep going down, four, three, two, one, but then you gotta write that four, three, two, one, but you know they're gonna cancel. Now the other ones you have to write out, you guys, because there's numbers hiding in there. There's a three, two, one, and then two is two times one, okay? All right, so they all cancel, you guys. The red guys cancel, and then all of these numbers will cancel with something up there. So this four went into eight two times. This three times two is six. That canceled out that six right there. And then this two goes into two and into 10 five times. So we're left with 11 times five times nine times two times seven. Now the reason why I'm showing you that, you guys, is your calculators can't handle these big old numbers. If you punched in, say you punched in 12 factorial, it'll give you a number in your calculator that it doesn't look recognizable. And I'll explain that in class. So you got to break it down somehow so uh, to cancel. Otherwise, um, uh, you're, you're, they're just too big a numbers. I know um, 70 factorial your calculator says error because it's too big. It's too big even for your calculator to recognize. So they start getting huge and they start giving you numbers that's too many digits for your calculator. So they start giving you this, you know, with a little small 12 at the end, which means move the decimal over 12 places. Anyway, so um, when order doesn't matter, it's called a combination. I call them combos here. So the number of uh, combinations of R objects uh, taken from a group of N objects is is NCR. So this looks just like NPR, except we have the additional R factorial. NPR is N factorial over N minus R factorial. NCR is your P factorial one, or your permutation one, with the additional R factorial right there, okay? So, for example, how many different ways can a six-member committee be chosen from ten people? Okay, so here, order doesn't matter because it's just a six-member committee. If you're going to be on the committee, it doesn't matter if you're the first person or the second person or the third person. So, since order doesn't matter, this is a combination. So, this is 10C4. So, it's 10 factorial over 10 minus 6 factorial times 6 factorial. Okay, let's make that 4 factorial. All right, and then I'm going to go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6 factorial because I got a 6 factorial. Always stop at the bigger factorial. And then you got to write out the smaller factorial right there, okay? Those guys cancel. Again, 4 will go into that guy that many times. This will go into this guy, and this will go into this guy, okay? So they'll always cancel, you guys. So you're, uh, um, uh, anyways, I get uh, 5 times 3 times 2 times 7. It's 210 different ways you can make a committee of 6 people out of 10. Find the probability of being dealt Probability, remember probability is number of favorable outcomes over total number of outcomes. So the probability of being dealt five diamonds from a standard deck of 52 playing cards. Okay, so our uh, probability is number of favorable ways divided by total number of ways. So the number of favorable ways is uh, there's 13 diamonds in the deck and we're choosing five of them. We want them to be five. So those are our favorable ways, 13C5, okay? The order doesn't matter, so it's a combination. Sorry, my ring hit the desk right there. The total number of ways of choosing five cards from your deck is 52C5, okay? So our probability becomes 13C5 over 52C5, okay? So 13 factorial over 13 minus 5 factorial times 5 factorial. 52 factorial over 52 minus 5 factorial, 5 factorial, okay? So I just um, uh, went all the way down to the bigger factorials, and then everything cancels, okay? You always got to write the other smaller factorial in there, okay? 5 will go into one of the numbers on top, 4 will go into one of the numbers on top, and 3 and 2 will, okay? All right, so anyways, I, I did um, uh, cancel those right there. Let's see, this 4 times 3 is 12. It canceled out that 12. This 5 and 2 is 10. It canceled out that 10. So I'm left with 13 times 11 times 9 on top. Okay, on the bottom, this 5 goes, I'm sorry, this 5 and 2 makes 10. It canceled out that guy and made it uh, uh, 5. 10 goes into 55 times. 4 times 3 is 12. It went into 48 four times. So I'm left with on bottom 52, 51, 5, 49, and 4 when I multiply all of those. Okay, so there it is right there. And so we get that, and that's approximately tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, five ten thousandths of a chance of um, getting dealt five cards and all of them are diamonds. Okay, all right. 
So, a food manufacturer is analyzing a sample of 400 cor corn kernels from the, uh, for the presence of toxins. In this sample, they know that there's three that has a da uh, dangerously high level of toxins. So, if three of them are high-level toxins out of 400, then there's 397 that are non-toxic, okay? So, four kernels are going to be selected at random from the sample. What's the probability? Again, there's probability that exactly one of the kernels contains a dangerously high toxin, okay? So, it doesn't matter about order. These are combinations. So, the possible number of ways of choosing one toxic kernel out of the three toxic kernels, because it did say there were three toxic kernels in there, is 3C1, okay? The possible number of ways of choosing the three non-toxic kernels, because we're choosing four kernels, okay, and we want one of them to be the one of the toxic ones, only one of them, exactly one of them, so that means the three, the other three are non-toxic. So the possible number of ways of choosing three non-toxic kernels from the, uh, the rest of the non-toxics, 397, is 397C3, okay? So since we're doing this at the um, same time, we use the fundamental theorem of um, counting principles, and that means we multiply uh, those results, and that'll give us the uh, the number of ways of choosing uh, one toxic and three non-toxic. That's the number of favorable ways, okay? So the total number of ways, and so it equals that. That's how many uh, ways we can favorably get one uh, toxic kernel and three non-toxic, okay? The total number of ways of choosing four kernels is 400 C4. So that's our bottom number, okay? So probability is our favorable divided by total. And we get about, um, uh, looks like about, uh, looks like this is gonna, they want us to represent it as 30 thousandths, okay? So tenths, hundreds, thousandths, 30 thousandths right there, okay. All right, you guys, if you are in my class, whoops, I went a little bit too fast. If you're in my class right there, uh, I assigned this first, and then uh, because we're having a short day today for PSA testing, PSAT testing, I also assigned this, okay? We got a test next week. All right, you guys, take care.